CBS presents this program in color. Tommy. Boy, the, the audience sure looks like a good group, don't they? Look at them. I don't know. I spot a few weird ones out there. <laughs> right. No, they're a really a great group, and I really I feel strongly you're enthusiastic, and I want to invite you, all of you, I mean this sincerely, all of you are invited to a party tomorrow night. Really? That's right. Now, wait, right. you're going to invite all these people to a party? Every single one of them here coming are you to... Oh, you're going to rent a big room, a big ballroom for everybody, right? No, I'm not going to do that. Well, you can't have it a... Uh, uh, your apartment's too small for everybody. No, I know that. That's well, right. where are you going to have it? At your house. <laughs> no, you're not going to have it at my house. I, I, listen, I've got a brand new house. I've got new carpets and drapes. i got new furniture don't, and antique tables. Don't worry. Listen, I've don't, got a lot of things. Dick, I don't want these dick, drunken people. Dick, shut up. <laughs> don't worry about well, it. Well, why shouldn't I worry about you're it? You're not invited. <laughs> It's the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. With guest stars, Herman's Hermits, Pat Paulson, special guest star, George Burns, the Jimmy Joy Singers, the Louis Dupont Dancers, and Nelson Riddle and his orchestra. Brought you by Anison, with a specific compound that relaxes tension as it relieves headache pain. Anison. Some people can slow down, take things easy. Headaches? <laughs> Not him. But maybe you can't live this way. You have growing responsibilities, a growing job, growing children, growing problems. Your life is more complicated. You often get painful headaches, and pain causes tension. Pain, it's tension. That's why today's Anison is made for you. It relieves pain fast, and Anison relaxes tension as it relieves pain. Look, this structure illustrates the amount of pain reliever in an aspirin or aspirin with buffering. Anison starts with this same pain reliever, then goes further, adds more, more of the same pain reliever doctors prescribe most. And Anison is specially fortified. When Anison takes care of headache, there's no more pain, and its tension is gone. Anison relaxes tension as it relieves pain. From Television City in Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, meet the Smothers Brothers. Sing a worried song, I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long. It takes a worried man to sing a worried, worried song. Sing it takes a worried man and sings a worried. I'm Tommy, now wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I got rhythm. <laughs> now, why aren't you singing? Because I'm not worried. I said. Why aren't you singing? Because I'm not worried. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song, and I'm not worried, so I'm not going to sing a stupid song because I'm not worried, and I know exactly what happens to a person when they worry. <laughs> Are you kidding? What happens to a person when they're worrying? Warts. Oh. <laughs> How can you warts. equate getting warts to singing, get... it takes a worried man? That's ridiculous. You, you, ever, you, ever, you ever heard of worry warts? <laughs> That's, an, that's a courtesy applause, I want to tell you. That was just ridiculous. Doesn't worry me, though, because I'm not worried. I don't know why I'm now, not. Now, Tommy, you do not, not get worry warts. I mean, you don't get warts from worrying. You know, you, that's about as ridiculous as saying you get warts from touching frogs. 
Yeah, but every, everybody knows you don't get, Dickie, everybody knows you don't get warts from touching frogs. You know you, that? I even know that. But you do. If, if you, if you, but if you really believe, if you truly believe in your heart, you can turn into a wart. You want me to prove how ridiculous your argument is? It's I'll not... prove it to you. You cannot get warts from worrying. Take the president. Why me? Come on, now, Tommy. I'm trying to prove something. Now, take the president. You're president Johnston. Johnson. Johnson. Now, he doesn't have any warts. Yeah, I've noticed that. You know what that means? Well, it could mean uh, one of uh, three things. One of three things. Yeah. Number one, <laughs> maybe it's irrelevant or irrelevant. Number number two. Number two, you're you're getting hot. Maybe he doesn't worry as as much as as I think he does. Okay, what's and three? Maybe he doesn't mess around with frogs. <laughs> Although I've heard stories. All right. <laughs> but I don't just, believe them. Tommy, just, just sing. It takes a worried man to sing where it's sung. I'm worried now. But I'm I won't worried be. now. Now listen, you've been saying I'm sorry. No, I can't, def I can't fake you, you, a dickie. You fouled up the song. It doesn't make a difference. I'm not worried. Now, come on. Nothing Is it, there's bothers plenty me. to worry about. Nothing now, if you want to find about. some... You're an exception. Everybody worries about everything, and you I have do. nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing. Don't you worry about what's happening in our country today? Don't you worry about the race riots? Dick, Don't you worry about the burning and the looting? Dick, Don't you worry we... about young soldiers fighting their civilian brothers in the city streets? Boys will be boys. <laughs> He's not kidding. You know, you, I just he doesn't worry. worry about anything. I can't worry, Dick. It's just You know, each week, I don't know why, but each week, Hundreds and thousands of people out there worry about you. You think I'm kidding. You think I'm lying, right? Well, and you know, I could prove they worry about you because they write letters. They sit down and stamp a letter. They mail it. You know what they say? What? Each letter says, how's Tom? <laughs> How do you feel about that? Thousands of people say, how's Tom? That's what I said, thousands. Hundreds of thousands. I'm fine. <laughs> Don't worry about me, I'm fine. I, okay. I'm, you worry? I'm, I'll worry okay, now. Okay, let's sing. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. I'm worried now, but I won't be but I Stop. <laughs> I think we, I don't think we ought to sing this song in this key. Because it's, What's uh, the matter with it? Well, it's kind of high for me, and I'm, I'm really worried about hitting that high note. No, Tommy, what do I you don't, mean? Uh, I don't mean to be worried like that. That's but I'm worried you about You sing the low notes, I'll sing the high notes. Okay, don't worry about it. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. I'm worried now. Wait a minute. I, oh, for I, crying out, what's the matter the, now? I just thought of something. This will really... What's worrying you now? I think everybody will get a chuckle out of You're this. You're all worried. Now, what? I want to share this worry with the world. I just thought the lyrics, the lyrics don't... says it takes a worried man to sing a worried it's song. Fun. There's two of us. That's not right. I'm worried about that. That is One ridiculous man, to worry I about can't. it. The Kingston Trio sang this song. They, there's three in a trio. They made a big hit, and look what happened to them. Broke out in warts. <laughs> It takes a worried man to sing a worried song I'm worried now, but I won't be worried long Thank you, Thank you very much you know the song, Mrs. Brown, You've Got a Lovely Daughter? Yeah. Well, it was one of the country's biggest hits, of course, a little that while ago. That was sung by the Herman's Helmets. That's right. No. <laughs> How many was Hermits? The Hellman's Hermits. Hellman's Hermits. <laughs> but here they are to sing their latest release, and it's called Green Street Green. The Herman's Hermits. If you got a pack of trouble Away and on your worried mind And if you tend to see things double And you can't unwind Take a trip to Green Street Green 
get yourself a little seat Everything is kind of groovy Down at Green Street Green Situated north of Nancy And just a little east of west The people there do what they fancy Dressed in fancy dress To take a trip to Green Street Green And get yourself a little seen Everything is kind of groovy Down at Green Street Green and There's a man with a band under the tree Giving out the greatest Organize your time of leaving A bus will take you there All the way to Green Street Green Get yourself a little scene Everything is kind of groovy Down at Green Street Green Everything is kind of groovy Down at Green well, that was that was too much. Yeah, you know, I thought it much. was really good. You know, I liked it musically, but I didn't really understand what the song was about. What do you mean? Any nitwit can understand what that you song means. <laughs> That's really a relief. At least I know now you could explain it to me. <laughs> I wish I didn't know. Yeah, but I'm sure you do. I'll tell you what, we'll talk about it later. All right, Tommy? Okay. See you later. Later. Do you know what's best about these gift star coupons? They come on old gold filters. Right. <laughs> but there's so many wonderful things you can get with them. A whole catalog full. Best taste yet in a filter cigarette. Right. <laughs> uh, you can get watches and sheets and toasters and basketballs and almost anything. Still at popular prices. I think they know that, dear. <laughs> or you can turn them in for cash or use them with trading stamps. They come on old gold filters. Well, they're very nice, too, dear. It's the best coupon that ever came with a cigarette. It's the best cigarette that ever came with a coupon. And if you like to smoke menthol cigarettes and don't want to lose getting coupons, get new menthol spring 100s. Same gift star coupon that comes on old gold. New extra long length, new extra full menthol taste. If you'd like to smoke menthol cigarettes, but don't want to lose getting coupons, you'll enjoy new menthol spring 100s. Same coupon that comes on old golds. In line with our policy of taking a stand on the pressing issues of the day, we now present another in our continuing series of editorials. The subjects, should the fees doctors charge be regulated by law? And here he is speaking for our program is Mr. Patrick Paulson, Vice President. Of late, more and more people are expressing the view that doctors are charging too much for their services. Now the complaints of exorbitant fees come without almost exception from those who have been going to doctors. <laughs> I say these people are sick. I listen to him. If you want to get a true picture, there's an old saying, if you have two guys, scales and gorges and fredges, you'll not have an inaccuracy parts, but several will be sliding in. In other words, a horse with a broken leg never asked to be shot. Now, if a surgeon socks it to you, remember their long years of training. Eight years in medical school, 10 years for the dumber ones. <laughs> and don't forget a surgeon has his expenses too. Secretary, fancy office. And what about the payoff to the guy who really does the operating? <laughs> Put yourself in the place of doctors of today. 
But they have big cars, a mansion with a swimming pool, maids, butlers. Do you think it's easy leaving all of this every morning to work with sick people? <laughs> In conclusion, let's take the case of one patient, a Mr. J.P. Henderson. May he rest in peace. <laughs> no, better yet, take my own case. I was recently in an automobile accident, going off on an on-ramp. <laughs> I was on the operating table 57 minutes, yet the fee was only $1,300. And they didn't charge me a cent for the horn they left in me. parties, <laughs> but it sure louses up my love life. <laughs> For your sake, thank you and please keep well. Good night. If you wish a copy of the preceding editorial, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Editorial, Box 1763, Beverly Hills, California. My brother sang a song last year, and we received a lot of requests for him to do it again. It's called The World I Used to Know, and it's from his brand new album, Saturday Night the World. The lyrics were written by Rod McCune, and they go like this. Someday some old familiar rain Will come along and know my name And then my shelter will be Till I do, I'll stay a while and track the hidden country of your smile. Someday the man I used to be Just a man, I'm just a man. You'll find my feet are made of sand. But till that time, I'll tell you lies and chart the hidden. But till that day, day I'll be your man and love away your troubles if I can. In the world I used to know. In
that's, uh, I don't mention again, your new album, Saturday Night at the World. I yeah, you sing it thank great. you. I'm I hope you mention it every week. What? Hope you mention I'll it. mention it every time if I can uh, get uh, talk to you over the noise going on. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's fun. It's fun for me to come out and sing a solo because it's something that I've never, well, I never, uh, I've never done it before. We've worked together, always in twos, like for eight years now. Right. And so we like to work in two again by singing a, a song. We don't generally like to do two songs in a row, but we'll do this one because it's such a great hit. It was one of the Beatles' great songs. It's entitled Day Tripper. Got a good reason for taking the easy way out. Got a good reason for taking the easy way out now. She was a dead tripper. One way ticket, yeah. It took me so long to find out. I found out. Nelson, thank you. Good. Good. Thank you. Boys, I know I was supposed to come out later, but I just couldn't help myself. Oh, you, you needed some help, huh, George? What's the matter, George? No, 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 not oh, me. You, you want to help uh, me? You do. We, we do? Yeah. You see, uh, it's not me, it's you. It's, it's, it's about the song you're singing. Well, what's wrong with it? It's a great Beatle hit. It's one of the well, great songs. Well, there's nothing wrong with the song. It's, 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 it's the way you're singing it. Well, we're singing it just like the Beatles, the same arrangement. Yeah, and it was a big hit. Right? Was. That's, that's the key to what I'm talking about. It was a big hit, but not anymore. You see, if, if, if they had sung it right, it would have still been a big hit, right? Never thought about it. I always just assumed the Beatles were right. Yeah, so... We oh, what do they know? A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of rich kids. Listen, but George, you're forgetting. <laughs> That's why they're rich. They did it this way and it was very popular. Would have been twice as popular if they had sung it right. Now, what do you mean exactly? I'll show you. Um, watch me. Uh, Nelson, let's go. <laughs> Got a good reason for taking the easy way out. Got a good reason for taking the easy way out. She was a day tripper, one way ticket, yeah. It took me so long to find out. I found out. Day tripper, yeah, yeah. Day tripper, out, and it's over. <laughs> well, what do you think of that? Compared to what? <laughs> Compared to the slow, draggy way that you sang it. Now it's got vitality and pep and meaning. People mm -hmm. will understand it better. I don't understand quite how they're going to understand it any better. Well, you're singing about a day tripper, aren't you? Yes. yes well? That's right. Well, what? Well, what the heck is a day tripper? I don't know. I don't know. See, tripper. you boys don't even know what you're singing about. That's right. Did you ever, did you fellas ever read the, uh, the Boardville Guidebook? Oh, oh yes, yes, sir. sir. We, yeah. we now, that was your first mistake. No, we, we just We just through it. We just looked at it. Very well. <laughs> Look, it's simple. If you don't know what you're singing about, get in and get out fast. I'll tell you what. You sing the first line, you sing the second line, I'll do the fillings, and we'll wrap it up fast. Now, exactly like you did it? Same tempo. Okay, Nelson. One, two, two, two. Got a good reason for taking the easy way out. Easy way, hard way, long way, short way. Got a good reason for taking the easy way out. Good reason, bad reason, sad reason, reason, reason. Good day tripper, one way ticket, yeah. yeah. Took me so long to find out, I found out. Day tripper, yeah, yeah. Day tripper, out and it's over. over. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're down to the last few kernels on the plate. Reason tells you this is the time to stop, but something drives you on. Hunger for flavor you've never found in corn before. This is Libby's Buttered Corn, the first canned corn in the world that's cooked in butter. Not soaked in water, but simmered in butter. Cooked in butter corn, peas, a whole new line. Buttered vegetables, too good to get away. From Libby's. Hi, uh, Debbie. Libby's wanted to show you how good their low-calorie fruits really are. Hey, Billy, can I have a can? More. Fine, honey, just help yourself. You see, when Libby's took the sugar out of the syrup, they found that peaches taste peachier, pears, pearier, pineapple, pineapplier, et cetera, et cetera. -er. Uh, so good, even sugar-loving kids dig them. Right, kids? Yeah! Something good is always cooking at Libby's. 
Good evening. My name is George Byrne. I'm, um, I'm not really a name dropper, but I have to tell you who I am because I got a new makeup man, and he's absolutely marvelous. He's wonderful. Makes me look 30 years younger. This is the way I used to look 30 years ago. So you can imagine how I look now. <laughs> Tom and Dick asked me to come out to introduce this sketch about Robin Hood. The boys like to do new stuff. <laughs> now, this is Sherwood Forest, where Robin Hood and his gang do all their robbing, terrorizing, and killing. It's sort of a 15th century Central Park. <laughs> now, here comes our hero of the story. Robin Hood. Hi, I'm Little Red Robin Hood, but I don't uh, talk to strangers. <laughs> Who did you say you were? Little Red Robin Hood. What's, uh, what's Robin Hood doing uh, running through the forest dressed like that? Well, I'm going to Maid Miriam's house. See, I'm going to give her these cookies. <laughs> Grandmother okay. made these cookies. <laughs> I think we have a problem. <laughs> I'm sure. Look, kid, you're supposed to be doing the story of Robin Hood. You know, the arrows and the bows, and he steals from the rich and he I, gives I, to the poor. That's, that's, I, that's, I, I know, that's, George. That's, 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 that's the story. I know, George. Little Red Robin Hood, who lived in the forest with the, with the bow and arrows and stuff, and his little band of merry hermits. Look, look, look. <laughs> you're, you're, you're mixed up. You've got the wrong stories. You see, uh, 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 <laughs> I'm wasting my time. Well, let's get on with the story. Well, I gotta go see, now. I'm taking these cookies to Maid Mary. Well, good, good. Okay. Give her, give her my best. Yeah. Give her a cookie for me. Bye. Goodbye. You gotta watch out for the wolf. I will. <laughs> well, I don't have a show, and he's on for next season. <laughs> well, now to continue. You know, it's not easy to be a narrator when you when you don't know what the story is. Well, here come some more characters in this epic. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, we're Robin Hood's merry men. <laughs> good. Do you, you rob? Do you rob from the rich and give to the poor? That's right. Yeah. Well, good. Good. Thank goodness we're back into the right story. Yeah. Let me introduce me, men. This is bashful, sneezy, sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm dopey. <laughs> doing Little Red Robin Hood and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> hey, don't you want to know who I am? I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> Let me guess. You're either Snow White or, or Liberace. <laughs> now cut that out. <laughs> Are you kidding? You see this badge? See this... Oh. <laughs> I'm the sheriff of Nottingham, and I'm out to catch Robin Hood, because that's, that's how the story goes. Boy, is he in for a surprise. <laughs> Look, I'm a little mixed up. You tell them what's going to happen. Uh, well, here's my plan. Tonight, Robin Hood has a date with his sweetheart, Maid Marian. Little does he know that I have captured her. Uh. <laughs> I'm going to disguise myself as Maid Miriam. Because I'm a dead ringer for her anyway. Stop, 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 Merry Hermits. I see our leader approaches. Oh. Little Red Robin Hood. Oh. oh, hello, my hairy mermaids. Hello, my very marmots. My hairy bar merry barmaids. My... Hi, fellow crooks. <laughs> what treasure do you have in this basket for us this time, Robin? <laughs> oh, cookies. Cool. There was, yeah, there was a riot in town, so I looted one of the bakeries. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! Get your hands off. These are for Maid Miriam. Oh. Come you! <laughs> Hark, I hear the voice of an angel. Come to me, Robin, you little devil. <laughs> But 
have made Miriam. What big eyes you have. Better to see you with, my dear. But made Miriam. What a big nose you have. <laughs> Better to smell you with, my dear. <laughs> but made Miriam. What big flat feet you have. That's because I'm a cop, and you're on your own. Yes, the sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> You'll never take me alive, sheriff. I challenge you to a duel. A duel? A duel you want? A duel you shall have. On guard! On guard! <laughs> 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 A gun. Boy, can I see that for a minute? Yeah. Wow. Hey, for a second, you have to sharpen a ray thing. Wow. Where'd you get this? Got it through the mail. <laughs> wow. That's really great. <laughs> I don't care for that at all. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. You're in, Robin. Where did I hit you? Uh, right here. Robin, I now appoint you the new sheriff. Gee, I don't know anything about being a sheriff. All I know about is lying, stealing, and chewing. Chewing? <laughs> well, that's a start. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Listen, before I... Uh, would you be careful with that gun? You could really hurt somebody. <laughs> well, that's the story of Little Red Robin Hood, and if you like to tell your friends. Wait a second, George. <laughs> the story isn't over yet. It isn't? No, don't you? You don't know the story of Little Red Robin Hood at all, do you? No, I guess I don't. By royal decree, I am trying this glass slipper on everyone in the kingdom. <laughs> it's just your size. <laughs> First thing in the story that fits. <laughs> Your Royal Highness. Your Highness. Your Royal, Royal Highness. Highness. Right. How do you like that? I've been in show business for 50 years, and tonight I'm a princess. <laughs> We'll be right back with George Burns, Herman Herman, and Pat Colson on the second half of the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. Hi, I'm Dick Smothers, and I'll be right back with my guest, George Burns and Herman's Hermits. Uh, Tom, what do you got? What's that? It's a magic lamp. I, I mean, have. you're coming in on my show, butting in like this. What do you mean that's a magic this lamp? This is a magic lamp. What's it supposed to do? I can make you disappear. Oh, I'd like to see that. <laughs> oh, see you. <laughs> I told him I could make him disappear. Stay tuned for the second half of the Tom Smothers show. <laughs> now I'm going to make me disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Charlie, you smoking one of those 100 millimeter jobs? Yeah. Always figured you were a unswitchable tartan smoker. <laughs> How come you changed? Changed? Us tartan smokers will never change our stripes. The stripes mark the smoke with a charcoal tip. The charcoal tip that gives tartan the taste worth fighting for. Us tartan smokers will never change our stripes. I see what you mean. New tartan 100s with the charcoal tip. The Hermans, uh, Hermits, their most popular number today is Museum. You know, there's so much I could say about this number, but I've never heard it before. <laughs> Here are Herman Hermits with Museum. I drink sweet wine for 
breakfast I slept but an hour or so I smiled a little in the silence Deciding I'm ready to go So meet me under the whale At the Natural History Museum I think that's what she said A little bit sad about having to leave them Yawning in the sun You know, uh, those of you that have seen the show uh, before last, you know, during last season, you notice we had occasionally had a question and answer period where we'd ask, uh, we'd ask the audience to ask us questions about anything they wanted to. And so tonight, we'd like to stop that policy. <laughs> and we'd like to have our own kind of like, our, our, own, our own kind of ask you questions. And we'll get answers from you instead of questions. Now some of you, do any of you remember that? <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ask questions, just as casual conversation, get to know our audience, like our audience gets to know us each time. Like, uh, and you have to speak, when I, when I ask you a question, you know, I'm going to ask you a question now. And uh, like, where are you from? Los where? Los Angeles. Can you project? <laughs> Los Angeles. Los Angeles? What's your name? Laura. Laura? Are you with this man? Is this your husband? No. <laughs> Messing around, huh? <laughs> are you, uh, you, are you a doctor? I was. <laughs> you could pick that guy. <laughs> and um, you're not all together, are you? What do you think about uh, what? I know a question that probably stir up a lot of things. I'm going to ask you. What's your name? Alice. Alice. How is it? Uh, how is it, Alice? <laughs> <laughs> take over the night show with these kind of <laughs> What do you do, Alice? You a housewife? No. <coughs> what, what, what do you do? Anything? Yes. Are you going to tell me? Yes. What P. Lorillard Company. P. Lorillard Company? They make uh, tobacco, don't they? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have interesting people here. <laughs> Where, where are you from and what's your name? Jupiter. Your name is what? No, I'm from Jupiter. <laughs> You're from Jupiter? Yes, I'm just visiting. You're just visiting? <laughs> You're not 
uh, are you are you from uh, are you from this area? Uh, originally. Yeah. Or before we moved. We, we, <laughs> I mean, before you came down from Jupiter, uh, or after you came down to Jupiter, are you, are you staying here? Uh, for a while, yes. What do you think about television? Well, um, it's kind of short ranged. Do they have any of that up in Jupiter? <laughs> uh, well, there's a certain portion of the people who have it. A certain portion of the people who have it. They're just in their minds or what? No, they're vending. <laughs> they're what? Vending machine. In their vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole little group. Uh, is there any way we can pan down? No, I'm traveling by myself. Are you traveling by yourself? It looks like you're all, uh, if you start from here and just kind of pan down. <laughs> yeah, how the hell did you in that? <laughs> He's got a flower. Yeah. From the little girl next to me here. The little girl next to you? Hey, you're, what's your name? Goldie. Goldie Keith, right? From San Francisco, Haight-Ashbury. Are you, are these, are your friends from Haight-Ashbury too? Well, we're all together. We were traveling around together in, in a bus. In a bus. Hey, do you, anybody remember that show we had last year? Right? Yeah. 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 You, last time she was here, she gave me a, a flower and, and, a, and a present, right? <laughs> Bag of fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I really liked it. You know, I shared it with my friends, and uh, we all grew a lot. Can you stand up here? This is. We had a lot of fun with you last time. You're down. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. That uh, you gave that man a flower. <laughs> what have you been doing? What is your? You're with uh, the man from Jupiter, well, occasionally. He's just telling us about some other things that are going on today. <laughs> some other things we don't know about. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, we're glad you're here. Glad you came down from uh, San Francisco. Oh, I didn't come down. I never come down. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, come be in L.A. for a while and dig the smog, you know, before it's too late. <laughs> I can see. Might not have a chance. <laughs> yeah. Did you see yourself on the show last time? She was right in the audience. We did a sing-along. And uh, did you see yourself on the show? Yeah. Was that me? Yeah, that was you. you... I didn't see it. <laughs> you didn't see it. What are you doing? Are you you're still living up in... Uh... Kate Ashbury oh, area. no, you know, it really, it really got to be a drag up there. You know, the gray lines came through. Mm -hmm. People are all the time, you know, and so then there's, there's cement and everything. So we moved out to the country for a while. And We're down here up in San Francisco. Well, moved out and just traveling around in the bus together, you know, went to New Mexico and beautiful New Mexico mm -hmm. into the desert. And right now I'm, uh, I'm staying on a hog farm. <laughs> <laughs> on a hog, hog farm. Hogs are beautiful, you know that? They really are. They're, hogs are, hogs are real, you know? They're right earthy creatures like we are, you know? Hogs get right into the mud and to the earth and the dirt and everything. And they, wow, I mean, like, you know, if you get with the hog in the dirt, you can really dig yourself there. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not dirty. You can, they, we take a lot of, a lot of uh, baths and stuff like that. You you know, that's a misconception. Baths are grueling, they really get clean, but getting dirty is part of the fun. <laughs> I know, I bet you what you hear and what uh, the, the flower children and the hippies are doing, they, they listen to their, their mind and they hear probably the, the, the river of life and the, the, the moment of life when there's no past and no present. Yes, the immediacy of life is a river flows down, seeking out the truth and the wisdom, for there's no past, That's no really present, groovy. yet knowing the instincts of the complete existence. That's beautiful. They're finding wow. and rolling down. Wow, well, that's beautiful. You're, you're totally wrong. <laughs> could have been a hog too, you know, but uh, you're very lucky. I know. You know, up in the hog farm, you say there, there is a hog farm where there, a lot of the flower children... Oh, it's here children, in L.A. Here yeah. in L.A. with the hippies that live up there in the flower All sorts children. of people. And they all have long hair. All the, all the guys have long hair. Even hands. some doctors and lawyers come up with hogs. <laughs> Do they have long hair too? Yeah. 
Uh-huh. They and, grew it, huh? And, and they grow their own hair. <laughs> How would I look with long hair? Oh, beautiful. Didn't you see yourself? I mean, you know, with long hair ever? No, I've never had long hair. No? no? I mean, with that wig on. I saw you with that blonde hair. Oh, yeah, and little red Robin Hood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you were beautiful. <laughs> you were gorgeous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, try it sometime and grow your hair long. I think you really dig it. I mean, you're still a man. I mean, God gave us long hair, right? <laughs> Some of us didn't get as much, much? as, you know, <laughs> as uh, others of us got, you know? You ought to try it before you get all bald. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta love these people anyway. They have a certain, certain way of life. I was just away. putting you on. Really. I know, I know you were. Just and, teasing uh, you. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the show again, to wow. see you here. And, uh, and your friends, we welcome you down, all of you. And the man in the, did you get the man's name that was sitting next to you at the end? No, but I know he's a nice man. <laughs> Gave him a flower. Do you, do you, do you like the flower children? Do you have anything uh, that bothers you about them at all? I think that they're uh, trying to live a world of their own and they're not really bothering anybody. At least they've never bothered me. <laughs> She's coming on pretty strong there for a while. <laughs> I have a, well, I, I have a special necklace here. You know, it's kind of hung up in my hair. Yeah, but so your mind's hung up in your hair, too. Yeah, you know, that happens. <laughs> I've been saving this. <laughs> That's a groovy place for it to be hung up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very special necklace. I'd like to, well, I'd like to give this to you. It's a, it's, I made this one myself. Beautiful, thank you. Wow, you're welcome. I grew it myself. <laughs> really? These are beads, huh? No, they're seeds. Yeah. I grew them and picked off the seeds and strung them and everything. You can grow them if you want. It's beautiful to watch the plant come up. It's a very beautiful sort of lime-colored herb. It's, you, you can use it in spaghetti or uh, salads or brownies or stuff like that. And it's uh, really good. It's sort of like oregano, you know. Yeah. Groovy. Thank you. Goldie Keith. Oh, right? you're beautiful. You're beautiful. I love Let's you. give her a hand. Goldie <laughs> Keith. Can the brand of spark plug make a difference in a car's performance? In test after test, all sanctioned and certified by the United States Auto Club, Champion showed it can. In performance tests at Sebring, Florida, 46 out of 50 Cadillacs accelerated faster with Champion Turbo Action spark plugs with booster gap than they did with spark plugs without these features. In tests in the laboratory, 48 out of 50 Chevrolets got better gas mileage with this same type of Champion plug. In mileage tests on Utah's Bonneville Salt Flats, 49 out of 50 Chevrolets got better mileage with Champions. Can Champions make a difference in your car? It depends on your car and you. No two cars and drivers are alike. But in test after test, cars sparked by Champion gave better performance. Next time you get a tune-up, insist on Champions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six dancing girls direct from Mars, doing an excite... Excuse me. <laughs> George, George, what are, you, what are you doing with... It's, it's a token of esteem to a fellow flower child. Really? Oh, wow. May you always be turned down by the petals of peace, the barking of the dogwood, and the meowing of the pussy willow. <laughs> Would you give that? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, like George, my shirt? I grow it myself. <laughs> I was just talking to a fellow flower child. You really like the flower children? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, when I was, I was one of the first flower children. I didn't think flowers were invented then. Oh, yes. There was really? just one tree. There was just one tree on the one With an tree. apple, an atom under but it, you... and I sat with them. How was the apple? Fine, darling. It was fine. <laughs> you know, to, to, to be a flower child, though, you have to believe and making love and not war. I go them one better. Yeah? I don't do either one. <laughs> Putting this on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sure. you are. Can you still smell the flowers? Well, not too well. These days, I just get a kick arranging them. <laughs> but in those days, I sang all the flower songs, and I'd like to do one now. You want to do a flower song? I'd love to okay, do a flower song. Okay, I'll get Tommy in here. And we'll okay, good. To Tommy, come on in. Yeah. Hey, George says he was a flower child when he was uh, younger. Really? Was he? He said he was a flower You're child. putting me on. Oh, yeah. You when are? I was a kid, oh, no, no, no. When I was a kid, I used to go in the backyard and smell pollen. 
Did that uh, make you blow your mind? No, just my nose. It gave me hay fever. <laughs> yeah, we were crazy about flowers then. Like flower ties and flower shirts. Yeah. And Nelson, a flower song. I love to call you Rose, dear, but roses fade away. Roses die when wintertime appears a little humming. Mm -hmm. I love to call you Daisy, but daisies always tell what sweethearts like to whisper in your ear. Mm -hmm. I love to call you Honey, but Honey runs away. I much prefer a name like Cling in Mine. Mm -hmm. And if I call you Buttercup, the day. No, not yet. <laughs> And if I call you Buttercup, I told you, not yet. You didn't tell me, you told my brother, not yet. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you, Tommy, not yet. You feel better now? And if I call you Buttercup, the dandelions would eat you up. <laughs> so I'll buy a ring and change your name to mine. I'd love to call you Rose, dear. See, you have a new bottle of ivory liquid. Yeah. That's the creamiest, mildest ivory liquid ever. Really? It even whips. It what? It whips. Try it. All right. Sure looks creamy. It's getting thicker. Hey, it did whip. Mmm. Wash your dishes with creamy ivory liquid. It can help your hands to the creamy complexion of youth. Creamiest ivory liquid ever. It even whips. I don't need this toothpaste anymore. What are you doing? I thought you said he had a good checkup. Only I drink every daddy. And you want to give him a crest for what? For this. New mint flavor crest joins regular crest, both with fluoride, the most effective cavity fighter ever put in a toothpaste. Have checkups, watch treats, and brush after eating with crest. You know, I like the way that crest tastes. I'll get you your crest too, dear. You know, the time has come to say goodnight, and we want to thank our guests for tonight, George Burns and the Herman Hermits. So Let's have a big hand for them. They great? And next week, our guests will be Jane Powell, Noel Harrison, and an all-girl rock group called The Cake. Yes, three of the most... Uh, These, The Cake, they're three of the most uh, vicious young ladies I've That's ever right. seen. No, I mean, vivacious. Vivacious, not vicious. Vivacious young ladies you've ever seen. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you know, our show is, uh, this season is being shown in Canada on the CTV television network. That's the Canadian television network. Yes, De, Ga De Gaulle located. Oh. <laughs> Actually, he didn't, didn't put anything in writing. He just sort of yelled it out of the plane and he, as he went out. Anyway, we just want to say hello to all of our Canadian friends up there. So, hi, hi Canadians. Canadians. Oh, oh, let's not forget, Tommy, that a lot of the Canadians up there speak French. We have that's, a lot of French-speaking Canadians. That's, you're right. right? So, and so do you French-speaking Canadians. We say, hasta la vista, amigos. <laughs> Tommy, that, that doesn't sound like French to me. That's French-Canadian. Oh, could have fooled me. I hope I fooled them. Yeah. <laughs> so if that's all there is to say tonight, yes, there I is, well, there's, No, there's one more that. thing. There's Wait one more thing. We would like to say hello to all the Americans up in Canada, oh, yes, yes. all the young men who went to Canada, 
to avoid the draft. And we want to talk about you guys. <laughs> take it easy. Just wait a minute. Turn you know, take it easy, fellas. We hope to have you home, you know, and by not this November, maybe next. <laughs> Good night, Tom. Good night, Dick. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, Canada. <laughs> This is Roger Carroll speaking. Cigarette? Yeah, here, new one.